Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Gus Pappas. Um, I am the mayor of the city of Bel Air and was recently elected so. Um, first of all, I want to welcome all the residents of the city. Um, I want to welcome all the department heads. I want to welcome all the chairs and vice chairs of all of our boards and commissions and all the residents that are here. I also want to recognize uh, and welcome our entire staff. Um, uh, you are the vital part of, of this city, and so to large part, this is all about you and what you've accomplished and what we may very well accomplish in the future. I also want to um, welcome City Council. I, I look forward to working with you, and for those of you who have been on council before, thank you for all the work that y'all did and the accomplishments that I'm going about to talk about um, in large part. Um, this weekend, uh, I was um, uh, up in Arlington with my wife uh, at Parents Weekend with my daughters at Georgetown, and as I was driving down the freeway, I looked over to my right, and there was the Arlington National Cemetery, and it talked to me, it, 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 it reminded me uh, of the sacrifices of the fallen, it reminded me of the sacrifices that we all make. Um, for everything that we have. And so when we get up at the very beginning of our meetings and we give the pledges to our flags, um, we think back of, of not only all the sacrifices that we make here in our daily lives to make our city a bit better, but, but make our country a bit better. It dovetails very nicely into the notion of what I experienced during our campaign this last. And before I get into some of these things, I wanted to just share with you all that for the first time in probably a decade, we had an election where there was no incumbent mayor. And so we had the opportunity, and, and I think to some degree a bit unprecedented, where we had a tremendous number of interest in folks that came, residents who came forward and to run for city council and to run for mayor. Um, it, it was an exceptional field of, of folks who had a tremendous amount of experience and desire to serve the city. Um, during that entire period of time, what we were able to accomplish that most people around the country have not is, is that we did so all looking at one thing in mind, and that is the good of the city of Bel Air. And, and I think that through all of those efforts, what we come to find out is that it's that kind of an attitude that allows us to accomplish the things that we do is we, we look forward, we always have, and I think that we always will. Um, and so I think all of those, I, I think all of you, everyone who comes forward to put their, themselves forward, to put yourself on the line um, to do things that are not of the city, but your neighbors and your community. And that's the kind of spirit that I think we've always exemplified and I'm so proud of, of being a part of. Um, the theme that I have um, chosen for this year's is top family-friendly cities in 2023 and climbing. Now, I didn't come up with the uh, top family-friendly cities of 2023. That was bestowed upon us by an organization. Um, and uh, I'm going to get this down here, by the way. Um, and uh, where we were listed, as the Bel Air was listed as the most family-friendly cities of 2023, we were number 12. Um, as you can see, uh, the place that I was at this week in Arlington was number four. Um, I think that the picture that you see there, the cardboard, uh, cardboard boat regatta of Evering Pool, says it all with the smiling faces of our children, which is our future. Um, they talked about... Um, the 15 family-friendly cities and open doors list geographically cover much of the country. Open door was pleasantly surprised to see the level of investment cities nationwide are making in park development, which we just heard from our chair, um, and prioritizing open spaces. The chosen cities all feature parks, community centers, and open spaces. Um, all of the 2023 family-friendly cities feature kid-friendly local activities. I don't think there's any question that we have that in addition to everything else we have. And so what it tells you is that the investments that we have made all of these years have paid off. And not only do we derive a benefit here in this town, but the nation is noticing. And they see and they universally agree with us. But there's no reason to think that we're not climbing. Now, things always start out with the basics. Um, last year, I looked at the State of the City address. Before I go any further, 
Um, one of the things I always kind of wanted to say is when somebody says you start out with the state of the city address and you say the state of the city is strong. And I can tell you and share with all you that it is strong. It is strong because you see the reports that you've seen before. It is strong because we have fiscal responsibility. It is strong because we have an emerging community that is continuing to give. It is strong because we have much to do and we have a way to get it done with a city council that has the appetite to take on big and tough issues and with boards and commissions that are here to advise us all. And so I don't say that lightly. The state of the city of Bel Air is quite strong. Um, we've had our challenges. Um, I, I went back and I looked back at 2023 and I looked at what was the challenge there. And many of the slides at that point in time were about vacancies in the city. And so for, for much of the time, we were afflicted with the notion that we had so much turnover in so many different areas that it was really impressive. What was really impressive is that we were able to maintain the level of service that we had, notwithstanding the difficulties that we had during that time. Um, and so with that, if you look at 2023 and the, and the vacancies in March of 23, we had 23, 12% of our staff. And as you've seen through uh, staff's good, uh, uh, good efforts and the leadership of our city manager, Sharon Satino, we have kind of gotten down to where from 23 go to nine. Now, the most fascinating thing about that is this. Those weren't just the positions uh, uh, that, that do turn over from time to time, but we're talking very significant hires during that. We had several director and senior management hires. Development Services Director Travis Tanner. Where's Travis? He's right there. Um, Public Works Director Mark Velasquez. Mark's in here. Uh, Assistant Public Works Director Gilbert Salas. Is Gilbert here? Okay. Um, we have Human Resource Director Melanie Glaze. I saw Melanie. She's there. Uh, and Assistant City Manager Beth Jones. Uh, Beth is right over there. Beth is also our in-house city engineer. And so consequently, we've been able through that hire not only to have a city manager which helps out our city manager, but at the same point in time, we also have somebody that can help us with regard to our the contractual work, with regard to reviewing of plans. We can do some of that in-house and save the city money as well. So these were significant hires and significant progress that occurred in 2023 for which we will now receive the benefits and reap those benefits in 2024, 2024 and beyond. Um, all right. I move to the city departments. Um, let's go first. We will tackle our community, community relations departments. One of the things that I was looking at when we were talking about community relations was I asked all the, I asked Sharon and the department heads, give me your big hits, the things that you did that were really fabulous during the point of the year. What ended up happening is I got this list here. And, and it's five or six pages of the things that each and every one of these departments did. This is just a highlight reel of it. Um, community relations, refresh the city's website design and content. Engaged consultant for the citizen survey. By the way, the citizen survey is out there and addresses some of these very same issues that we've talked about tonight. Um, the issues with regard to what we want our city to look like, uh, what are the issues that are important to the city, um, whether or not, what do you think about Evergreen Pool, what do you think about our parks, what do you think about our infrastructure, what do you think of our streets and drainage, what, do you, what are your priorities? These are all out there and these questions are there for each and every one of us to address. I did mine today, I said in my little PSA over the weekend that I was gonna do it the weekend, I delayed, but I got it done today. It's a good survey and I encourage everybody who hasn't done it to do so. Um, that will allow city council to look at some of this information. Is it perfect? No. But it is helpful and will allow us to understand what our residents think about some of these very important issues that are before us. Um, the apps launched, One Bel Air and Bel Air Collects. Uh, supported outreach activities for comprehensive plan review and the regional drainage program. I'll get to those things in just a minute. Supported community events and employee engagement activities. But you see, that's not really all. They also worked um, with regard to the Tammy Award that Gay mentioned a little bit earlier with regard to the Pets of Bel Air calendar. My dog's going to be on there next, next year, by the way. I'm, I'm, we're making that happen. Um, that's a great calendar. 
Um, worked with IT to develop and launch employee intranet site. Held two arts and crafts festivals, of which you heard our culture and arts board talk about. Held a meeting with utility partners. Held engagement meetings with local schools and city manager. And held four community connections meetings and coordinated a photo contest with the culture and arts board. See, the staff, the staff what's really fabulous about our city is, is that we have staff that engages and works with all of our boards and commissions and our residents to accomplish these things. They provide the support. So it gives them a real means by which to make things happen. And I, I think that's the beauty of those relationships. All right, let's move on. Uh, we've got development services. Uh, with regard to them, their highlights for the year were achieve full staffing and reduce reliance on third-party contract inspections and plan review. Beth was part of that. Remember, I mentioned that early, earlier with regard to our city and engineer. Um, they initiated the comprehensive plan review, which you've heard a little bit about already. Completed ordinances regulating noise and outdoor lighting. You've heard about some of that. And if you had attended the city council meeting or viewed um, online, you would, under, you would appreciate that those are very, very difficult issues. And yet what we're trying to do is make the quality of life a bit better for our residents without, um, without stopping it for anyone else. Um, we, they amended the ordinances regulating dumpsters. You've heard about some of that scoreboard signs, and environmental site reviews, and they initiated a draft to amend the tree ordinance. That will be coming before council shortly, uh, and we'll be looking at that. Um, but that wasn't all. Um, they revised ordinance regulating contractor site maintenance. Um, they facilitated significant developments and redevelopments in the Bel Air Place, Bel Air Triangle, and the Methodist applications. They successfully completed submittals for building code effectiveness grading schedules. Um, they initiated review of the SmartGov for improvements, improved drainage standards for the code of ordinances. Look, these lists are just the highlights of what some of our department heads are doing in this town. Um, and I'm so happy to be able to share those with you tonight. Uh, development services. Now this is, I found this, when I saw this, um, I talked a little bit about so what's going on in the city? You know, we have, for the most part, for so many years, have thought, well, you know, we're built, right? We've built all of these. The, these. Uh, there's not a whole lot more to do. Actually, there is, and this tells us a little bit about that. Um, we, of course, we have our work over at the Bel Air Triangle. Y'all can see that. That's ongoing. Um, but new home construction, we had 51 new homes going in for a total value of $47 million and some change. Uh, we had 109 home remodels um, to the tune of five million uh, five hundred thousand. There, we had new commercial. Four new commercial properties went on. We had commercial remodels, 37 for another 33 million dollars, and we have 57 demolitions. The little asterisks. What does that say? Some of the remodeling and demo types permits are minor, but still recorded in the system. Look, we're tracking all of this so that we can understand and appreciate what is happening in our town. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, finance. Okay, this is a great area, and it's one of utmost importance to all of us. We need to make sure that, one, we're getting enough money in to take care of the things that we need to take care of on the back side of it. There's some accomplishments for our finance department. The Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting, 27th straight year. It's not a fluke. This has been going on a while and it continues to go on. Distinguished Budget Award, sixth consecutive year. They completed the RFP process for depository services and awarded the contract. They completed the RFP process for utility cost of service and rate studies and awarded the contract for that. These are very important things that are going on in our town right now so that we can understand the level of service, the cost of service, that we become more efficient for our residents. Um, their list continues on before I get to a few other slides that I think are really pretty interested. They assisted with the transition of payroll functions from the human resources to finance field management analyst position, implemented the 2023 fee changes that we that were promulgated, initiated upgrade to the ERP Pro 10. I have no idea what that is at this point, folks, but it sounds really good, okay? Um, they completed the appeal for the, for the reimbursement of de 
debris removal f related to Hurricane Harvey. That was big to the tune of $431,000. And they, of course, they re reviewed the 2023 investment policy. Now, here's a couple of interesting things, and I think you'll enjoy some of this. Um, this is what our adopted 2024 budget looks like. The general fund, we have budgeted for 2024 beginning on October 1st of 2024 of 27 million bucks. That's what we're going to spend in our general fund, or at least that is what we have budgeted to spend. We have an enterprise fund, which is our utilities, our water, those sorts of things, spending 11669000 and some change. We have our debt service fund. I am going to jump over here and find out, make sure exactly I say that correctly. Um, our debt service fund right now, with regard to what we pay in debt, is $9,500,000. That is principal and interest. That is what we pay on the things that we have done in this city this year. It, it is significant. I'll show you a breakdown of that in a second. Um, the VET fund, uh, difficult name, but it's tech, equipment, vehicles, things like that. We have a $664,000 budget for that. We have a capital improvement funds of $7.6 million in change that is sitting there, and it's either fund balances, which means we're going to put it there, or we've got it in money for capital improvements, which is oftentimes a carryover from the previous years. And we have a special review fund of $698,000. Those are for parks, things such as that, expenditures in those areas. For the total expenditure budget of 2024 of $57 million, and when people ask you what's your budget in the city, we're talking almost $60 million. This is a, this is a significant expenditure uh, of what we've got to do. Now, I find it, I want, I want to just tell you, this is, for me this is metaphorical, but all of those numbers are in the black. None of those are in the red, and that's significant because we operate in the black. We do not spend money we do not have. Y'all should take comfort in that and should appreciate that. Um, let's see, moving on. Um, I thought this was interesting. Adopted a fiscal year 2023 budget with projections um, to show you the difference between what was budgeted 2023 and what we think we'll actually end up with. It's not quite perfect yet. We budgeted $29 million and some change in 2023. We think we're going to end up a little bit better off than that. Um, we budgeted uh, the enterprise fund $11 million. We've got eleven seven. It's a little bit higher, but we had a drought, if you all recall. We had to pay a little extra in, uh, in water this year. Debt service fund, um, we budgeted uh, spending 9.6. We spent 9.6 and a little less. The VET fund, you can see where that is. The capital improvement fund, you can see where that is. And the special revenue fund, you can see where that goes. And so consequently, we budgeted $61 million and uh, our projections are that we'll come in at $61 million and a bit less. So everything is kind of staying in line. Um, I thought this was also interesting, a comparison between the 23 and 24 budget. You can see the comparison right off the top, the 29 to the 27, 11 to 11, slight differences there, debt service fund. You can see we last year was 9.6, it looks like 9.5, and you can see in the other funds as well. So the difference is, is that it looks like we're going to be at about 57 million and some change this time, whereas we were 61 last year. Um, interesting. The, um, this is a very simple rate. It's a tax rate. It's what the rate is that you pay. When you get your tax bill from HCAD and on the valuation that you have for your property, this will, you will pay 0.4370 um, to the city of Bel Air. Um, we use that. The city uses that. And in your maintenance operation of about 30 cents of that 43 cents, and then we pay debt service of about 13 cents with that. That's where that $9 million comes from. Um, if you go through the state average, I thought this was an interesting point. The state average on taxes is 0 0.50. We're at 0 0.3. Uh, not to not to make any not to make any uh, projections about whether that's going to go up or not, but I just think it's interesting information that everybody should understand and appreciate where we are. Um, 2024 property tax burden. I thought this was quite interesting. It's a graph. Sometimes these things are a little hard. You can see Bel Air's there in the green. 
and there are some other cities, um, Houston's included, uh, I think West University Place is included, and what that basically means is the tax burden for per million dollars of value in our city. This next one will tell you a little bit more about that. So here we are, 3661 is a 23% number, and what that is um, uh, of, of the, uh, excuse me, um, is the 3661 is the dollar value, which is what somebody pays on a million dollars in value. So if your house is $1.6 million, and with all your exemptions and all the other things, you pay taxes on a million dollars, you're going to be paying thirty six sixty one to the city of Bel Air. Not a bad deal. You heard all those department reports tonight and everything that you get. I didn't even count Independence Day, all the other things you have. Think about what you pay for your, uh, your cable bill for a month or, you know, your going out to dinner bill. All of that goes for everything you get from the city of Bel Air. Um, I think value is the, is the optimum word there. Um, moving on. So what, where do we get our revenue from? Where do we get it? Um, if you look at this, 63% of our revenue comes from property taxes, 13 from sales taxes. Other is about 10%, and you can see some of these other items that are seen there. We are property tax dependent. 63% of everything we get comes from our property taxes. When we talk about how important it is for the value of our property to go up in this city, nobody's joking around. This is real. So when projects are coming before you and you're thinking about what are we going to do about the value of our homes? What are we going to do about the value of our commercial areas? And so when you see council talk about these kinds of things, you can understand that we are so heavily dependent upon that for what we get. That is why we're doing it. Um, percentage of revenues from property taxes. Again, you can see Bel Air, Southside Place, Highland Village, and Bel Air of those items there. Now, there may be other folks. We can expand that graph. We can add more cities. We can do a variety of things. But the fact of the matter is that we are very reliant. That's that same 63% that I just showed you. Um, percentage of revenues from sales taxes. Conversely, look at where that is now. Now, that's not to say anything but make an observation of what we have from our revenue side of where we get our money. And in this particular instance, you understand that about 13% of our money comes from sales tax revenue. So again, when the messages come and the importance of a commercial development, the importance of our comprehensive plan review, the importance of making sure that we have quality business to serve all of you, there it is right there. And you can see it. Um, 2024 debt per capita, a very interesting uh, and, and basically, that is, what does it cost per house? Um, we, interestingly enough, have, it says I move on here. Ooh, I think it's right here. Terrence is in the crowd. He's going to give me a test right after this is over. I just know. We have a little over 6,000. You're, you're, I know. You're, you're, you're watching. Um, the, we have a little over 6,000 homes in the city of Bel Air, give or take. And, um, and the valuations from that are roughly about $5 billion. And uh, that is what our inventory, that is a generalized value. It's a significant investment in a very short 3.6 mile, square mile area of, of this town. And essentially what we're saying is, is that that's the cost of each of those homes. That's the cost of, of, of our debt per capita. Not significant when you think about the value of what we have versus the debt that we have. So what is that debt? Let's just jump right over there. Oh, did I miss it? No. Oh, the uses of our outstanding debt. Hold on just a second. I want to make sure I didn't. Eh, okay. Well, we're going to go back. We're going to go back. I think I got per capita. No, got you there. Got you there. Got you there. <laughs> And there, now I was in the right spot. Okay, so the uses of our outstanding debt. This is really, really important because most people want to know where's my money going to. And unlike the national debt where you really don't know, we do. That's the beauty of our town. We do. 
We know that 55% of our ex existing debt goes to streets and drainage. We know that 17% of our existing debt is going to municipal facilities. That's our police, that's this area here, that is our annex, that is our bee life area, that is our court system over there. Those are the infrastructure in the, our house, essentially, is that 17%. Um, we have water at 15%. Those are our water lines that we've needed to replace have been 50, 60, 70 years old over a period of time. Our wastewater line, same thing. And we're still paying off our investment over at Everlands Park, which you've heard much about uh, over the years and you get the opportunity to go over there every day. So when we're talking about what have we done with our debt, Look, we're not going out and buying Slurpees, folks, and we're not going out and wasting, you know, going to restaurants and doing this kind of thing. What we're doing is we're putting it into our infrastructure. We're putting it into our house and things you can feel, see, touch, and grab a uh, hold of, and that is a proper use of, of our money. Um, 2024 is the debt as a percentage of assessed values. Uh, again, you know, you look at it there. It's less than 2%. That's solid. Um, so, what is the debt? I got asked on the campaign trail, what is the debt of, of this city? And I can tell you, I was on council in 2018 when we had it up at $125 million. Um, and people were like, oh, it's a lot of money. It is. No question about it. No lie, no question. It's a lot of money. And it's a lot of debt. But throughout that period of time, guess what? We were still ranked as a AAA bond rated company, uh, a city. Why? because we could pay it, first and foremost. Two, we had that 2% number over there, which showed a tremendous amount uh, of, of capacity for that, and we were using it for the things that we needed to use it and for people want to lend you money for. Um, and now, as I sit here, we project that on September the 30th, 2024, this year, it'll be down on a principal basis to $92 million. So uh, during that period of time, the good work of people that you guys have elected um, and the staffs that are here and the leadership that you have have gotten that down from 125 to 92 over $30 million in just a short period of time. Uh, moving on, fire. Um, we've, got, we've got our chief, Diggins Hill. He's back here. Um, that's our next department. Um, I spent a little time on the, um, on the finance because I think it's a, a, is an important topic. But our safety is no less important. Um, our fire expanded the EMS service by implementing ultrasound technology and finger, uh, oh my gosh, uh, thoracostomy in the field. Um, Chief Till, you're going to have to help me with that one. Uh, implemented a flexible staffing model that allows the department to hire paramedics to fill vacancies when necessary. Um, I thought it'd be nice to show you a few little staff, a few little stats there. Total of uh, fire, 440 calls. Bel Air average response time, three minutes and 26 seconds. Not bad. National average, uh, by comparison, you're looking at six minutes by nation. Uh, the EMS, 1,619 calls. Bel Air average response time, 453. National average, seven minutes. Um, I can tell you, too, that throughout all of these periods of time, and these, this information um, and I can't say it for certain, but this information reflects the staffing shortages that we've had over a period of time. And I suspect when we get to the police information too, and I'll show you that as well, um, that over the course, because we're, we're better staffed than we were before, you're going to see some of these numbers go down. And hopefully next year I'll be able to report to you that they have. I believe that they will uh, because of that. Um, moving on, our human resources. Completed the RFP process for public works staffing study and awarded the contract. Completed the RFP process for a compensation study and classification study and awarded the contract. We've got, direct, we've got the hires. I went through that before. The director and senior manager of hire development services, Travis Tanner, of course, uh, Mr. Velasquez, um, Mr. Salas, uh, human resources director, uh, Ms. Glaze, and assistant city manager, Beth Jones. Um, these are important aspects because it's our people that give us the opportunity to do the things that we do. Without our people, we don't accomplish any of these things. Um, see Mr. Richter there? Good to see you. Um, Mr. Richter is our prosecutor for the city and has been for many, many years. And so they do a fine job too uh, as well. And they're part of the safety side of this 
uh, of this city. Um, I'll move now to our parks. Uh, let's see, hold on. Go back, information, technology, there we go. Um, procured cybersecurity enhancements, development network infrastructure for the new public works facility, configured and deployed the infrastructure necessary to introduce police body cameras into the police network, deployed an IT service management system to consolidate and reduce costs while adding asset management, management and inventory. A lot of words up there, but I can assure you that what they do in our IT department is really fabulous. They make everybody's life easier. They are constantly looking to create easier methodologies. They create efficiencies with regard to what we do here at the city. They help city council throughout this period of time, and they help us. They're constantly looking to apply new applications so we have better information faster so that we are able to track what we do in a way that we can do it a little bit better, and they're constantly looking to do that. And they'll teach me how to actually use my iPad. And so as far as I'm concerned, all of that is, is, is uh, you know, it's not that good. George, if you, you know, you just keep me good on the iPad, I'm good to go. Um, so uh, this is a, you know, the other thing too, and I, I think that the council will see this, it, it's more than just simply having uh, seminars on fishing and all the various things that have, that all of you and your various companies, I know you will take, you, you will go through and they'll have all of this awareness with regard to uh, invasive procedures and what have you, but they're doing all of that as well. And so we're trying to keep our safe. And if you think about it for a second, and you think about what just happened with this polar vortex that hit us a couple of weekends ago when we were talking about, Sharon and I were talking about, the, it got down to 18 degrees. It was the same temperature roughly that it did two years ago. We just didn't have the water event. And with the water event, it would have been, you know, it would have been difficult. But staff was on that. The winterization and plus the impacts that we can have if somebody really wanted to attack our infrastructure and our ability could have a tremendous impact on our life. So I don't underestimate the constant effort by our, T, our IT department to keep us safe and to make sure that our infrastructure is working all the time. Um, moving on, our library, Ms. Coors. Uh, replace the 31-year-old book storage shed with two new sheds. And if anybody had ever been out there, you've seen that shed, it needed replacement, no question about it. Um, we reestablished a reservation system for the library's meeting area and conference room. Look, I've got a list over here. I could read it all to you. There is a lot more that these folks do, but I think some of these stats are really fabulous because people start asking themselves the question of exactly what function does the library serve and is it still relevant in today's time? This tells you the answer to that question is yes, most definitely. Gate counts in 2022, 45,000 in 2023, 70. Significant increase. Programs, 168, 122. I suspect that's probably from efficiencies, but we'll hear from Mary at some point in time on that. Um, attendees, 2,800, and we had 3,900 in 2023, and the circulation is 172 and 177. So you can see these numbers and the interest that people have in our library and learning and reading and all the various programs that they have um, is not going down. It's not decreasing. It's not even plateauing. It's going up. And for any of you who've been around the city, you've seen our little pocket libraries and just the little things that make our life a little bit better. And that's all coming from our library. Thank you, Mary. Um, our parks, recreation, and facilities. Um, you know, this is a long list too, uh, but they've identified to renovate the facility for public works. A five-year lease began in 2023. They've completed renovations to the dog pound. Very important issue for all our little furry friends in the city. Completed security improvements to the wastewater treatment plant. Installed two new sheds at the library. We talked about that. And they've generated over $1.1 million in revenue via the recreation division for fiscal year 2023. Significant, major, high-end um, accomplishments for the parks, recreations, and facility. Um, I think I've got some stats. Yep, there we go. Now, folks, this is just the kid stuff. This doesn't have anything to do with the adults. This is just the kids' stuff. But if you look at Camp Paseo, the summer, 1,600 participants. That's all of our kids. Uh, generated $260,000. Youth basketball, 
a big hit. Youth basketball in the summer, a big hit, another one. Soccer in the spring, likewise. Soccer in the fall, volleyball, new. Swim team, that's always been legendary with the Barracudas. And then swim lessons, and you can see they generate with just the kids' stuff, $483,000. Um, throughout uh, our parks and through council have also looked at what do we do to make sure that our services and our facilities are best used by Bel Air residents. And so they've constantly evaluated those fees to make sure to price them just right so people can use them, but Bel Air residents should have an advantage. And we've looked at that um, continually to make sure that that's the case, that we are not uh, we are not opted out of our own facilities because everybody else sees the bargain that we have here. Um, okay, let's get to our safety side of things. Um, I think people understand that we've installed 30 flock cameras throughout the city. Um, I think most people that have been paying attention to that particular issue know and understand that that allows them to it's so that read license plates. It they also allows them to coordinate with the city of Houston and other jurisdictions so they can talk about things. So it helps to see what's coming into our town, what is rolling through our town, and where we're going with that. Um, they have deployed utility body worn video camera system. Um, deployed a dedicated traffic unit consisting of two officers. Filled persistent sworn personnel. Um, vacancies, fully staffed in Perrin, um, secured grant from the Office of the Governor, Public Safety Office and Criminal Justice Division, General Victim Assistant Grant Program for fiscal year 2024. I was just looking at that the other day, and I have to tell you, in addition to the all the issues that we do to keep people safe in this town um, through our good work and our police chief, Mo Lopez, we also we also help the victims. There is a grant program and assist, uh, uh, a, pro, uh, a program that was started so that we can actually help those that are the victims of crimes. And the things that they have done um, are, are really pretty fabulous. And so we are not only in good shape, we're in great shape. And again, as I've stated before, we're climbing. Um, some statistics there. Calls for service uh, handled by dispatch. In 2022, we had 31,000. In 2028, we had 38,000. Police only calls for service, 30,000 22, 36,000 in 2023. Average response time, non-emergency calls, 345, 514. I suspect that that's going to probably go down a little bit um, uh, now that they're fully staffed. Average response time, top priority calls, 453 in 2023. That did go down. Um, Traffic stops, 4,200 in 2022, 8,500 in 2023. Traffic stops cleared, you can see that, that's gone up. Percentage of traffic stops cleared with citation. As you can see, you know, some of these, these are stats, but when you have to look at it, so some of them are very obvious and some of them are a little bit deeper to understand exactly where they are. Going up doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, because in many instances, you've got certain things that are happening that you've got to stop, but then a call comes in for a robbery at a house. Well, that's the priority is immediately changed. Um, if you look at traffic stops as a percentage of total calls, it went up from 14 to 23. Of course, they handled their crashes, and of course, they've had triple the amount of arrest. One of the things that people will understand about law enforcement is, and, and I've read about it continuously, and that is, is that if they're out there and they're on the streets and they're patrolling around and they're seeing what's going on in those streets and they're stopping people, they're stopping crime. You don't know it. It's like an invisible force, but that's what they're doing. And so the notion of being fully staffed is not just some good idea. It's really imperative to our safety. So thank you, Chief Lopez, and thank you for all your staff and all your folks for all that they do to keep us safe. Um, Public Works, leased and relocated to a new Public Works facility, completed department organizational assessment, ensured our regulatory compliance and reporting requirements, and then initiated development of standard operating procedures, SOP for daily operations and emergency management. Look, these are the unsung, unsung folks of our staff. We don't really see them. We just know that the trash is taken out at a minimum. They're picking up the, they're picking up all the things on there. They're picking up the, you know, all your debris and your brush and all that sort of stuff being picked up on Wednesdays, probably. Uh, at least it is in my house. And and all the other things are being taken care of. They're also 
They're also taking care of our waste treatment plant that's out there, which is going to be an issue that's going to be coming up at some point in time that we're going to have to tackle. Um, and so these things are happening. Um, they, they're the quiet workers. That's a hard job because they're out there in the cold and they're picking up stuff. And like many of you, I think we had the conversation about what was in the, the pumpkins. I'm thinking to myself, I got to do that next year because I was one of those guys that put a pumpkin in a bag. And, and all of a sudden, and we've got to recycle that because those poor guys are picking up that pumpkin and it's 50 pounds. Because my wife, who's sitting right there, got six of them this year. Um, they look really good, though, I have to say. Um, all right. Look, um, I've talked about all the things that the departments in this town have done, and it's significant, and you've heard everything from the boards. Um, but let's go back. Let's circle all the way back to our, what do we do? What do we start with at the very beginning? Top family-friendly cities in 2023 and climbing. And let me tell you, all of this is all the stuff behind the scenes, but this is what we're really about, and this is what we're searching for this coming year and for years thereafter. Life in Bel Air. So what does that look like? That looks like Eagle Scout Project with the Fire Department and the Nature Discovery Center. Look at those smiling faces. Life in Bel Air looks like the Bel Air Little League on opening day. What's better than that? Life looks at a Bel Air Barracuda swim team. I don't, can't tell you how many times we've done that. That is life in Bel Air. Life in Bel Air is the Bel Air Live field trip to the Houston Food Bank. Look at those happy faces. Live in Bel Air is the H E Buddy visits that that was a tongue twister. Um, visits the library. Look at that. Live in Bel Air's campus sale field trip to the fire department. Live in Bel Air is the cardboard boat regatta at Evergreen Park. And live in Bel Air is a Springs and Arts Crafts Festival at Paseo Park. All of our vendors and our people just enjoying the day. And live in Bel Air is our Independence Day Parade and Festival. It's about the red, white, and blue. It just doesn't get any more hometown America than that right there. Planet Palooza, Library Greens Place, about planting trees and keeping the environment safe just so that we can have a good place to live. And live in Bel Air is our September 11 memorial. Let's not forget, I passed by Arlington, and we can see the fallen at that point in time because we remember. We remember what happened in the past. And live in Bel Air is about our national night out. There's Chief Lopez with all the kids. Is that Bel Air? To me, that's Bel Air right there. It's about the kids and all those smiling faces. And the high water truck pool, Sharon told me she was on the team. She placed last. I told her, she, I told her, it, it was, uh, you know, I'm not sure what the size of the truck was, but, you know, she was out there. Um, it's about the pumpkin patch and the Nature Discovery Center. Look at all those vivid colors, all those folks. It's about the great pumpkin hunt at Weston Field. It's about selfies with Santa. It's about Santa sightings during the holidays. We've seen that truck ride by, and it's about snow day with all our kids. All right, that is our Bel Air, but we're still climbing, and let me tell you why. Um, and I'm going to finish up. Um, we've got our comp comprehensive plan review. I was planning on reading some of that stuff. I'm not going to do that. Y'all know what this is about. It's about taking a look at what we want our city to look like over the next 10 or 15 years. Now, the trick to this whole thing is, is that it's got a whole lot of big words in there about what we think want things to actually look like. It's descriptive. It, it, it is not specific. It is not an ordinance. It's not zoning. It describes what we want to see, and then we come back around and we look at it and say, all right, we've got to put in ordinance format just exactly what that says. And, but we've got to look at that. And we've got to see all the things that it says in there. And then we've got to decide, is that what we want the city of Bel Air to look at for the next 10 to 15 or 20 years? And that's why it's important. So you've got to see, what do we want? What do we want our commercial areas to look like? What do we want our residential areas to look like? What do we want our focus to be? We want more restaurants. Do we want, and if so, how do we get them? Do we want, what do we want um, the, the, the specific areas with regard to downtown. What do we want it to look like? We know what we wanted 10, 15 years ago. Is that still true today? That's why it's important 
But that's why we're doing this, and we're doing it in 2024. Um, we've got our 2024 Bel Air Citizen Survey. I talked to you about that er a little bit earlier. That is happening. That will be important. Um, in just a minute, I'm going to tell you about the strategic plan that, um, that Sharon has been talking about that they developed for the next three years. But this council right here will be looking at that plan. They will be going over that and tweaking it to the extent that they need to. They may just simply say, looks good to us. Let's keep going. Or they may say, let's tweak this. Um, but that citizen survey will help us understand what people are thinking about. Is it perfect? No, nothing is ever perfect. We just keep striving to get information so that we can help along the way. Um, the end climbing is the regional drainage improvement plan. <sighs> Folks, this is a behemoth. This is a behemoth project. There isn't any way to cut it any other than to say this is huge. It's hugely important, and it's hugely... Um, uh, well, it's just, it's a huge project, and it's going to cost a whole lot of money. Um, but it's important because we, can, we can't completely control our own destiny. We have water that's coming from the north, the, the northwest, down through the southeast. We've got Cypress Ditch that's over here to our south that's just right there off Beach Nut that we all drain into. We, that drains into, into the bayou. Um, we've got a freeway that goes through Bel Air. We have got a railroad that goes in on, on, our, on our eastern edge. So all of this water that not only dumps on us, but that is kind of rolling through, hits that freeway and it backs up. It hits that levee over there with the railroad tracks and it backs up. It then comes from, if it overflows Bray's Bayou, then it comes that way. That's what happened to us in Harvey. And so our mission and our goal is to try and see what we can do to make sure that we can alleviate and mitigate those effects. And the first step of that is to fix this part right here. And that's not easy. You've got to have some place to take your water, and that is Cypress Ditch Improvement. And that's what this council is working really, really hard on as we are, as we were. It is the previous council was working really, really hard and set up a plan to start doing that. And those things are ongoing, but it's not anything that's going to happen fast. It's something that this entire city is going to have to work on. We all, from council to each and every one of its residents, at some point in time, your time will come before where you need to pick up the phone and you need to call somebody and you say, hey, Cypress Ditch Improvement and getting money from the state, nation, county, city of Houston, which is all part of it, is going to come to you. At some point, I'm going to pick up the phone or you're going to call from one of these find folks up here and say, we need your help. This is a big project that's going to cost tens of millions of dollars, and it's not going to be done overnight, but it's, it's super important because not only do we have to fix that, but we've got to create some detention, so we've got some plans on that. We also, what do we do with the water that's coming up and down, and at the same time, what do we do with the water that's falling on our town? What do we do? We've got streets that we need to fix. We've got our own retention, and we've got our own conveyance systems. All these things we're going to have to look at. So good news. Good news with regard to that is, is that we have plans. We have phenomenal, I'm telling you, phenomenal people that are involved in this, not only from the city but on this council, people that are knowledgeable, that are experienced, and they can handle the job, and we're all committed to do it. But it's going to take some time, and it ultimately will take all of us to get there. Um, can't underestimate this as the end climbing part of our job. Um, Bel Air Place, a little lighter on the note. Bel Air Place, uh, they're moving along right there at the old uh, that property, that 30 acres on Fornus Boulevard. That is kind of slowly, I'm, I live two blocks south, so I kind of watch it every day as I go by, and something else is happening along the way, but that will be something that's coming online as well. So that's climbing. And there's the Randalls side. So, and better days. Um, you know, look, um, this is part of the comprehensive plan, and council took this up, and, and the Methodists came forward, and they've got a project, and, and PNZ took up um, this incredibly difficult task, and um, they've got their thoughts, and they're, they have come up with a, a, a recommendation, and they're going to be sending it to council, and then it'll be council's job to take a, take a look at that. And so I, I think the, the, the thing about it is, is that the message that we have to send and we've been sending to folks is, look, we've got some things that we want to accomplish in this town. Um, 
Maybe we can do this. Maybe it won't work. I don't know. We don't know the answer. But I think what we all have to do with each of these opportunities is put our best foot forward, do the best we can, see them through, and then we'll make a good decision based on all the information that we have and what's in the best interest of our town. Um, so the strategic plan. I'm going to end with this um, because I'm, I'm really way over what I thought I was going to do. Um, but this is the strategic plan. I'll read this a couple of things for you, but to give you an idea of what we're really talking about. The strategic, strategic planning helps an organization fulfill its purpose by establishing a roadmap for directing operations and allocating resources in alignment with that purpose. Pretty well stated, actually. Um, the city of Bel Air has adopted this strategic plan to establish a three-year roadmap uh, focused on five strategic goals supporting by strategies and tasks to help fulfill our purpose. I'm going to go through the strategies. I won't go through the task. It's long, uh, and, and it's on our website in any event. Um, the city will revisit the strategic plan from time to time and will reevaluate our progress and update um, our strategic goals as needed. That's going to be our job to take a look at the, over the next three months. Um, but these areas, and, and there it is, and you'll see it. Again, the, the five areas are community, governance, infrastructure, public safety, land use, and zoning. Um, and you can see on the community, for example, through city services, programs, amenities, and partnerships, actively cultivate a sense of community, unity, togetherness, while celebrating, respecting, and valuing diversity. You know, those are laudable goals. They really are, but that's what we're about. And when you look at the governance, oversee and ensure the, de the delivery of municipal services in efficient, responsive, consistent, fair, transparent, inclusive. A lot of words, very descriptive, but that's what we want. I think everything I've ever seen says those are the kinds of things that we want. Infrastructure and asset manager. Maintain reliable services by taking a long-term, programmatic, and financially sustainable approach to infrastructure and asset management, replacement, and improvement. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. Um, public safety. Deliver responsible and visible public safety services that protect folks. Anything more to say about that? I think that's it. Um, land use and zoning. Set a long-term land and use zoning vision for our future that protects neighborhoods and enhances our commercial areas with predictable expectation and standards. Um, absolutely. Those are our goals. And then for each of those things, as you can see, with the picture of life in Bel Air in the background, um, these are the strategies. Provide a diverse mix, mix on the community. N nurture positive, productive relationships with community partners. Improve com communication with citizens, businesses, and organizations. And implement a common appearance. Now, the tasks that we have to accomplish those things are listed. But these are the goals. And this is what council has been working on before and will be looking at again this year. Um, on our governance, as we sit here in this very room, ensure administrative programs, policies, procedures, promote efficient, transparent, fiscally sound governance. Ensure responsiveness of citizens, ensure cost of services are captured. These are sort of the big policy goals and strategies um, that we are seeking in a governance of our city. Um, the infrastructure and asset manager. Ensure infrastructure, facilities, vehicles, and equipment are reliable now and in the future meeting established levels of goals of service. It's simple, folks. It's simple, but that's really what we're about. Mitigate the effects of development and redevelopment on public infrastructure. How to make sure it lasts and it lasts in the future. And public safety. I think we've talked about that, but you can see those protect personal assets and data, enhance public safety through increased pub police presence, and that's what our fully staffing allows us to do. Recruit and retain public safety personnel, and continuously improve emergency operations centers, activities, and response. Um, I know I've seen that car out there, um, but I don't think that we're actually using that to chase down any criminals. Uh, criminals. So, But I, I do think it shows up from time to time. Um, but it is amazing the difference between kind of what was happening back then and what we see today. Um, Land use and zoning of care, promote green space and trees, encourage and enforce city code compliance, ensure residents can experience peaceful enjoyment of their homes. Yeah, I'll stop there. I think, that's, uh, I think that's exactly what we're all looking for.
Um, thank you. Um, I, I thank you for the opportunity to serve as your mayor. I know that council thanks you for the opportunity to serve. Uh, there was a tremendous amount of work that went into 2023. Um, we are the 12th friendliest places and in this country, and there's no doubt in my mind that we can move up and continue to grow. We'll do it step by step. No journey was ever started without the first step. I'll leave you this one analogy. I'm a sailor, and I sail out there, and we never understand where we're going to, you know, you, you always look forward, and there you are. You're just kind of going at a snail's pace, and you never really quite understand what's happening until you take a look back and see how far you've come. And uh, if you've ever ridden on a sailboat, you understand exactly what I mean. We have come a long way, and we're still marching forward in a steady, fast way. So I thank you all for this opportunity to tell you the state of the city, the state of the city of Bel Air is strong. Thank you. Thank you.